Hello, basketball enthusiasts. Welcome to Ad America. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I want to welcome from Indonesian Deaf Basketball and SMIN 70 Jakarta. Hello, semuanya. Hi, welcome to Ad America, the U.S. Embassy's American Center. And hello, my name is Patricia Elizabeth. I'm one of the e-guide here. Today is so special because we're gonna meet the stars of NBA and WNBA. Today, our American athletes will share their extraordinary stories of becoming champions both on and off the court. I know you guys are so excited, but before we start our discussion, we're going to hear opening remarks from Deputy Assistant Secretary, Bureau of East Asian and Pacific Affairs. Please give a big round of applause to Camille P. Dowson. Hey, Salamat Sore. My name is Camille Dawson, uh, and I am here from Washington, D.C., where I work at the U.S. Department of State in our Bureau of East Asian and Pacific Affairs. And I am so excited to be here with you today at, at America. It has been quite a few years since I last visited, and it is uh, really fantastic to see so many NBA and WNBA fans here today. So, are you ready to talk about basketball? Yeah. Excellent. Uh, U.S.-Indonesia relations are based on a long history of shared values, including our mutual commitment to democratic principles and a shared celebration of and tolerance for diversity. We can see these shared values in our national mottos. Binika Tungal Ika. Oh, how did I do there? Did I say it right? All right. Close, close anyway. Um, so that's here in Indonesia and in the United States, e pluribus unum. Uh, which both of these mottos celebrate the unity that can be achieved when we embrace and celebrate our diversity. Basketball, one of the most popular sports in Indonesia, exemplifies our underlying cultural bonds. Basketball is for everyone, from professional leagues to neighborhood pickup games, school girls in hijabs to athletes in wheelchairs. Even someone like me who is vertically challenged can still love the game. Leveraging a passion for basketball, we can engage the next generation of Americans and Indonesians to teach valuable life skills like inclusion, fair play, resiliency, and hard work. This sort of engagement that builds stronger connections between us and underpins a successful and prosperous U.S.-Indonesia relationship for generations to come. So I am absolutely delighted to welcome today our two amazing sports envoys, Stephen Howard and Crystal Langhorn. Both of these athletes have had long and impressive careers. They have endured and overcome obstacles and challenges to excel professionally and personally. They have amazing stories to tell and important lessons to teach, both on and off the court. I hope you will enjoy your discussion with them, and don't forget to stick around for an autograph. Tara Mikasi.
Thank you. With that, Bu Kamil, please stay on the stage to take a group photo. With that, I will invite our stars for today, Stephen Howard and Crystal Langhorn, and also our moderator, Ralphie Nasution, to come on the stage to take a group photo. Then we're gonna move to the other side. So our audience is gonna be our background for a picture. Yes. So audience, you can say bye, hi. <laughs> In a count on three, one, two, three, shout out at America. One, two, three, at America. Okay, guys, you may be seated again. Thank you. Before I pass the floor to our amazing moderator, first I will introduce our amazing moderator. He is an alum 2012 National Open Door Exchange Program to Minnesota, USA. He is a former sportscaster for Indonesian Basketball League and currently he is a radio announcer and news anchor. So everyone, give it up to Ralfi Nasution. Hello everyone, selamat sore semuanya. Terima kasih sudah hadir di Ad America. Karena speaker kita berbahasa native bahasa Inggris, jadi aku akan switch ke bahasa Inggris juga. So good afternoon everyone, thank you very much for being here at America and today we have an interesting discussion and not every day we get the chance to actually meet and talk to uh, former NBA and WNBA stars. So again, Steven, Trista, thank you very much for being here. It is an honor of ours for just you to be here uh, in Jakarta, Indonesia. Thank you very much. A round of applause everybody. All right, now we really want to get inside to the minds of uh, Crystal and Steven. Let's start it off by just your first experience. Let's start it off with your first experience in professional uh, basketball. So the first question to you is actually, how did actually your journey in the NBA begin? And what inspired you the first time to actually pursue a career in basketball? Steven, we can start with you. Well, my NBA journey began by not getting drafted mm -hmm. uh, by the NBA. Um, I got invited to one basketball camp that was the Utah Jazz. I ended up making the team, um, and then from there, you know, ended up playing in the NBA for four years, being on the '96, '97 Utah Jazz team that played against Michael Jordan in the NBA Finals. Yep. We did lose, but we were there. <laughs> um, as far as how did my um, basketball journey begin, or what mm -hmm. inspired me? Um, I think at a young age, I loved playing sports and being tall. I, I kind of gravitated, <laughs> that, obviously, to, to that basketball. That is the advantages of being tall. Yeah, yeah, and I had to shy away from other sports like being a horse jockey or something like that because <laughs> of the height. Um, and, you know, playing in, in high school, I just continued to develop my skills. Um, and I, I think it was important, the fact that I had a wide range of interests. You know, I, I ran track and I um, played baseball as well. And then when I got to college, uh, my skill set kept improving, and I, I thought, you know, I can be good at this. And I, I made a goal to play professionally in the NBA. And I think that's really important when you have goals that you, you know, set it down, you, you aspire for them, and you focus on that goal. And I did that, and uh, I was able to, you know, make that goal into fruition and played in the NBA. Yeah, you played in the NBA, and you also played overseas for quite a while. Yes, I did. I played in Europe, Asia, uh, the Middle East, mm -hmm. um, you know, next door in the Philippines, yeah. in, in Japan, in China. So I enjoyed my time playing um, overseas as well because I really think it gave me a, a more worldly view of this earth and people and um, making me more accepting um, and just understanding, you know, we're all, you know, in this together. Yeah. You know, we're all just part of humanity and, you know, 
Let's make it happen. Yeah, let's make it happen. But now we move on to Crystal. How 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 was your uh, professional basketball uh, career started? So you draft. We were drafted in two thousand eight, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'll even start from my beginning and then. Oh, I'll go even into before the, that, let's go. Yeah. Um. So I didn't start playing basketball until I was thirteen or fourteen. I was in junior high. Um. I was tall, and my brothers played. So it was like, why not try it out? Um, I remember I was really nervous. Um, I couldn't even form my body to do a layup just because I wasn't skilled like the other kids. Um, but I really worked on my game. I wanted to get better. Um, and then when I got to high school, I started getting letters from colleges. And I'm like, OK, I can go play college ball. Um, I wasn't even thinking professionally at that point. Um, and then when I went to the University of Maryland, uh, then I was like, oh, I can, I can be a pro, too. I'm actually doing really well in college. And um, I was drafted by the Washington Mystics. Uh, that's in D.C. is a local team close to Maryland. So I played there for what pick? Oh, I was the sixth pick um, in the in the draft Ooh. first round. So sixth pick first round. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I played for the Mystics for seven. I mean, six years, and then I was traded to the Seattle Storm. And I played there for seven years. Um, and wait, I won two championships wait, wait, college. there. Did you do anything special in college? Yeah, I won a championship at the University of Maryland. Oh. Um, <laughs> this is my hype man here, thank you. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I, I was traded to Seattle in 2014 and I played there for seven years. And I won two championships with Seattle in 2018 and 2020. That was my last year playing basketball. So Wait, um, so you won in college? <laughs> You're the college champion and in the WNBA? Yes, I wow. won championships on both levels, so yes. That's a big deal. That's it big is. Deal. It is. It is such a big deal. So that's uh, both how you started in professional basketball. But sports, outside of your working on your skills, getting better at that sport, it also plays so many roles in shaping character and also building a positive mindset. Right? What, what can you tell us about that? Sorry. Uh, what role did sports oh. play in shaping your character and also building a positive mindset? I really feel like sports is a microcosm of life. Um, it, it teaches you so many life lessons that you can apply to everything that you're going to encounter um, while as an adult. Uh, the ability to interact with teammates, the ability to um, overcome adversity, uh, be a gracious winner, being a, a gracious loser, um, playing basketball all over the world. I played with different races, religions, um, and I think one of the things that I love about basketball, and we talked about this earlier, is it can unify um, people from different backgrounds. And so once you get on that basketball court, the ball goes up. It doesn't matter if you uh, are a millionaire or you come from you know, meager earnings. Yeah. You're out there with one common goal to win. And I think uh, when you apply that to life, whether it's personal, professional, um, just figuring out a way to um, unify with other other people, figuring out opportunities to understand other people. Because if you're on a team and you don't understand, you don't try to listen to your teammates, you don't try to work with your teammates, you're not going to be successful. In life, if you don't try to work with people, if you don't try to understand other people, you're not going to be successful. We're not going to be successful. So those are some of the things that I love about sports and those life lessons that I think everybody can apply uh, to their lives in order to help you know, this world be a better yeah. place to live in. Exactly. Uh, and sports uh, plays a big role as well uh, to, to face the actually problems in life, uh, the, the challenges in life as well. Uh, Crystal, wh what about you? I mean, I com agree completely with what Steven said. I would say basketball really has shaped who I am. I wouldn't be here talking to you today if it wasn't for basketball. Um, it's, it's taught me so many things. I feel like I was a person who... I've, I'm always more quiet in nature, more laid back. Basketball taught me how to be a leader, how to talk to people. And even sometimes, like, you don't have to use your voice to be a leader. You can lead by your actions. And I think basketball really taught me that. It's like, you don't have to be the loudest person in the room to have an impact. You can show people um, how to treat people, how to be. Um, and um, yeah, basketball really has just shaped who I am and has allowed me to grow. So after professional basketball, what keeps you busy right now? I mean, I know you've been traveling uh, a lot and uh, just spreading positive messages. 
But can you tell us more about what uh, what has been keeping you busy after uh, basketball? <laughs> okay. Um, well, so I retired in 2020, so that wasn't that long ago. Um, and I actually joined the front office with the Seattle Storm. I run our social justice platform. It's called Force for Change. Uh, it's a platform where we are trying to create a more equitable society, and we do that in a variety of ways. Um, we focus on voting, education, and legislation. We really believe that's um, the major piece to have a lot of impact and to change things. And then we focus on amplifying black women and then supporting LGBTQ plus communities and then also supporting BIPOC. And BIPOC stands for Black Indigenous People of Color uh, to support those communities as well. So um, I essentially run those platforms that we have. Um, I look up nonprofits that we invest in. Um, I work with our players on um, initiatives that they would like to do. Um, and I just reach out to people in the community and try to have as much impact as I can. Um, and then other than that, I just have my like hobbies. I like to shop, I like to, I like interior design, so, so things like that. Um, I like to read, I like to watch Netflix, so yeah. And you're traveling around the world to yes, <laughs> spread and positive messages world, and so. to inspire people. <laughs> That's about it. Steven, how about you? Uh, well, I retired a little bit longer ago <laughs> than um, Crystal did, um, but when I retired, I started working with ESPN as a college basketball analyst. Um, I worked as the studio analyst for the NBA's Oklahoma City Thunder and uh, the New Orleans Pelicans. Um, I still do call college basketball. Uh, I started working uh, in leadership as well when I retired from basketball, and I, you know, go across the country, the world, speaking to different organizations on leadership, trying to empower people to reach their their potential as well as. Um, enhancing their leadership abilities. Uh, I've started working with s several um, major league sports um, as far as their leadership. I work with major league soccer um, with their character development. I worked with the NBA uh, Academy um, helping their um, cross-cultural competency for foreign-born players that are going to come into the states uh, to play in college and potentially in the NBA and you know really just trying to use my platform to empower others, um, particularly those uh, in the marginalized communities. Um, I'm a girl dad, so I love what, what Crystal does. Um, and you know, I, I just want to amplify as many people and as many organizations to make this world a better place. But yeah. And now you're here in Indonesia trying to empower actually kids from high school. We have the Indonesian uh, deaf community as well. Yes. And my next question is, for young athletes, we have young athletes here in the uh, studio with us here as well. For young athletes who may face self-doubt, what strategies do you use to boost your confidence and maintain positive outlook? Just based from your experiences. Yeah, I would say for young athletes, there's so many voices out there. I think in today's society, you can hear a lot of things from social media. It's not just your family and friends. It's just a lot of voices. So. I would say to focus on who you are, who you want to be, how to go about that. If you want to be, and it's not just sports, it's, it's whatever you want to go into, how can I be, how can I get to that goal? How can I be my best? And um, like I said, it's a lot of noise, but you kind of have to block out that noise, which I know is difficult for young people right now. Um, but you have to remember, I tell people, I still do, I'll, I'll talk to myself like, Crystal, don't pay attention to what other people are saying, um, things like that, because it can be hard, uh, especially because you're so young. Um, but I would say continue to block out that noise and just try to, whatever you want to do, focus on how I can be the best at that. As far as overcoming self-doubt, mm -hmm. um, I think the first thing to understand is that self-doubt is natural. Um, it happens to us all. I've performed successfully in three different industries in the top 1%, and I have self-doubt all of the time. And much like Crystal said, she talks to herself all the time. We all talk to ourselves, but I think it's very important to make sure that that self-talk that you have is positive. Because if you think about it, the biggest influence
for everybody is yourself because you're always that person talking to yourself saying, I don't look good, I can't do this, I'm too heavy, I'm too skinny, I'm not a good enough player, I can't sing well, or whatever it is, your mind is telling yourself that. And so just trying to get a hold of that to make yourself talk to yourself more positive because regardless of what you're saying, you're going to influence yourself and trying to be a positive influence on yourself with positive energy um, because, as I said, we've all had downturns. We've all had um, been in dark places and, and not felt great about ourselves, but just continuously surrounding yourself with people with positive energy and being that light for yourself because there's going to be people that are going to always doubt you, but you have to believe in yourself at the end of the day, and as long as you have that one person that needs to be you, you can achieve whatever it is that you want to. So that's my... Yeah, I think it all goes back to yourself. Because yeah. you, you're the only person who has control of everything. So that's right, Crystal. You just have to block out all the noise and just start believing in yourself and just keep moving forward and continue to grow. Thank you. So uh, I'm going to talk about today's digital age. So it's quite different from back then, probably in the 90s, uh, where you played basketball today in the digital. I feel attacked. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. No offense. I'm sorry. My apologies. So, sorry, sir. By the way, in today's digital age, how do you encourage people to actually stay active and engage in physical ex activities rather than spending excessive time on screens? This is what we see every day now worldwide. So, what do you think? Um, this is. Another, another challenge, for not just young people, for everybody. Uh -huh. I think a lot of people are having problems with their phones. I would say, first let me go kind of tactical, even putting like a time limit on your phone with social media, so you know like, okay, I have an hour to scroll. And then it's like, let me put my phone down, let me do something else, let me have a conversation with someone. Always tell people as well, like when you're out having lunch or you're interacting with people in person, sometimes put your phone down. You don't always have to have it. Um, and that, I just feel like social media has taken over so much of our lives. I understand it can be very positive, but it's like you, you have to figure out a way to put the phone down. I don't know how else to say it. It has to be a way where you're like, I just don't need this in my hand all the time. I know. Even sometimes when I'm sitting, I'm watching TV, and I have it like in my hand, and I'm scrolling. Like It's just a mindless scroll. It's more so about trying to be intentional with what you're doing. If you're, if you're scrolling and you're barely paying attention, or it's, it's going to become a habit, and you don't want to create habits like that. So just try to be intentional. Um, try to focus and say, I don't need this phone all the time. I understand people are attached to their phones, but um, you just got to put it down sometimes. You got to realize it, you know. I've set a timer on my uh, digital medias, but I ended up not caring. I ended up just putting my phone in front of my eyes again. But at the end of the day, you just have to know when to stop. So don't do what he does. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Don't do what I did. I'm actually learning how right now. I'm actually putting uh, my TikTok to 30 minutes. So 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, you have to put a, a passcode. I end up putting a passcode and I do it again for 30 minutes. So don't do that. So again, do not do what our moderator does. Do not. Do not. I'm not an inspiration just yet. Well, maybe next week. I will, I will stop doing that next week. But, uh, Sion, what about you? Uh, what do you think about this digital age where people are so addicted to their phones, probably leaving uh, physical activities outside? Well, since you mentioned the 90s, what is digital? What, is, what do you mean by that? What do you mean? I'm just kidding. No, I'm sorry. Um, You're busting me right now. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's difficult because, you know, young... For young people, you know, you guys have so much external stimulus, and a lot of that revolves around digital, your phones. Um, and I, I've been saying this throughout this trip that most people fail in life because they give up what they want most for what they want now. And you have to figure out is something on that phone, w watching somebody else do something stupid or watching somebody else dance, is that helping you to achieve your goals in life? None Probably of you are, not. <laughs> yeah, none of you are gonna are getting paid to look at TikToks or Instagram. Yeah, there are some educational things that you can utilize for your future, but for the most part, it's mindless, just entertainment. And so figuring out what you want most in life, and you have to be resolute about that. You have to have a singular focus um, and just understanding, like, 
utilize it for what it is, like just for something to entertain you at times, but it can't be your main focus in life. And so I think you have to understand first who you are as a person, which takes a lot of self-reflecting. But after doing that, just figure out what you want in life and understanding, like did this 15 or 30 minutes on your phone help you to your goal? And if it didn't, then you'd have to figure out a way to curtail that and to um, shrink that and figure out how to access things that's going to help your goal. And I think once you do that and once you realize, like, well, I was just on my phone for 30 minutes and nothing positive happened in my life. Actually, something negative ha might have happened because I'm looking at myself like, why am I not doing this? Why am I not doing that? You need to understand you're doing what you have to do to, to be successful and understanding that the digital age, social media, ultimately is not going to help you um, acquire that. I want to add one more thing. It's like, okay, let's say you have a bad day and you do, you're on social media all day. Just don't let it turn into every day I'm on social media. It's like eating bad. Like, okay, you had a, a cheat day. You, you ate pretty poorly one day. But like, don't, let, don't eat poorly every day. It's like trying to control it somewhat. Like, we all have slip-ups. It's sometimes like, okay, I'm scrolling, but I'm like, I can't let that be every day of my life. Yeah, that's actually pretty right. Yeah, you have to set a limit to yourself. Actually, you have to you have to actually push through, and it's not easy. I know it's not easy, especially people have everyone have their phones right now. I mean, people starting from uh, elementary school already have phones right now. It's different from back then, but you well, and and like I'll ask a question. Everybody here has a dream that they want to accomplish, right? Raise your hand if you, you have you a dream. You have a dream. Raise your hand if you have a dream you want to accomplish, right? So. In your life, you're either going to accomplish your dream or you're going to help someone else accomplish their dream. <laughs> so we would rather you accomplish your dream. And you're not going to accomplish your dream watching your phone, looking at your phone, watching Netflix all day, or something like that. Mm -hmm. So again, figure out those goals and yeah. then go out there and make it happen. Yeah. Do you have any specific uh, solutions or recommendations? Once they know their goals, what should they actually do? Well, I know, like, so when I wanted to be a professional basketball player. Let's talk from your experience. I surrounded myself with like-minded individuals. So I surrounded myself with the best of the best, the best in the world. So I was around the best athletes, the best basketball players. In order to hone my skills, I went around guys that I was better than because that's not going to help me. When I got out of playing as a professional athlete, I didn't hang around professional athletes as oh. much. Uh, I started hanging around people that worked in TV. Um, I was a college basketball analyst, so I would watch that, but I wanted to learn how to be a better TV analyst. Mm -hmm. Okay, then when I became a speaker, I started to hang around great speakers. I would study great speakers, the Les Browns, you know, and see what makes them great. So you have to figure out what you want to do in life and then surround yourself with those people because that's the only way you're going to learn, you know, and so you know, even hanging around Crystal with the things that she does with social justice, I learned from her uh, w with things that I don't know as much about, you know, her work with the BIPOC community um, and, and things of that nature. So you have to surround yourself with people that are going to make yourself better. Even your friends, you know, my friends changed after I got out of from being a professional athlete because I needed people that were going to elevate me hmm. and not take me down. And so I think we're all evolving all the time. And if your friends don't evolve with you, you need to get rid of your friends. If your business place isn't evolving with you, what you want to do, you need to find a different place to work. But you always need to be kind of auditing yourself and understanding where you are at the time, where you want to go in life, and then change it. Yeah, I agree completely with, you, with what you said. Um, I will also say there has to be sacrifice. Mm -hmm. um, I think people don't talk about that a lot. I mean, like, when I was in college playing basketball, of course, like, everyone's having a great time. People are going out. And it's just like you can't do that all the time. If you want to have your goals, you have to limit some things. Um, and it's tough because you want to do what everybody's doing. But if you want to be great, you have to separate yourself some way. And that's with sacrifice. Even, I say, like playing basketball overseas, that was a sacrifice. Like you're not around your family all the time. But it's like, if you want to be great, 
um, and you want to be one of the best in the world, there's choices you have to make. We make choices every day. It's, it's, you make choices every day. You don't think about it, but like those choices end up being the life you're living today. So I think if you really focus on like these small decisions that you think might be small, like, okay, I'm scrolling all day, um, and you really think about it, uh, you'll start making better decisions and, um, you know, hopefully you'll reach your goals. So in order to uh, achieve your goals, I think having a mentor is also an important thing. Do you have a mentor, like, growing up and uh, while you achieve your dreams? Well, my mentor, I, I was fortunate to, you know, come from an amazing family. So my mentors were my parents. Okay. Um, but that's much like I was talking about when I um, stopped playing professional sports. Um, I found people that were good at what I wanted to do as far as TV, and those became my mentors. Same thing with being a speaker. Um, I, you know, went around great speakers. I would email them. I would, um, I would call them. I would say, mm -hmm. hey. How can I learn from you? And when you reach out to people like that, you would be surprised. They will reach back yeah. out to you. They will help you. Um, most people are good people, and they will try to help someone that really has their heart set on something and really is passionate about becoming better. better. So yeah, you need to have mentors, and you have to look in different areas to find that. But you have to be very persistent mm -hmm. you know, because it's your goal. Because as we always say, if it was easy, anybody would do yeah. it. So you're going to have adversity. Um, but you have to be resolute, and you have to fight through all of that adversity. Yeah. Actually, reaching out, people are hesitant to actually reach out. So don't be hesitant to reach out. Uh, I don't know, DM, your man, DM someone you uh, aspire, and you will be surprised sometimes the feedback that you get. Crystal, what about you? You have to, because she gets a lot of DMs, so she has to fight <laughs> through all those DMs. So you got to be persistent with that one. No, you know what's funny? My parents are my mentors as well. Um, I didn't have like a role model of basketball growing, growing up or anything like that. Um, but I think it was just watching my parents, how they raised us, how they worked so hard. I felt like that kind of influenced how I live my life. Like anything I do, I put forth so much effort. I try to be my best. Sometimes it hurts because I'm a perfectionist a little bit. <laughs> But um, just watching them and how they raised my family was what really um, pushed me. But like they said, even with a mentor, I know people have reached out to me like, don't feel like you're bothering someone. I feel like mm -hmm. a lot of times people, they don't want to annoy someone, um, but people always want to give advice um, if you're trying to improve and better yourself. You keep telling them that, that I'm uh, annoying you, though. Now you're still You've been annoying me for 10 uh. days. So that's, a, that's a different story. <laughs> Okay, I think we still have uh, time for a couple more questions before uh, we give a chance to our viewers right now in the studio to ask questions for both of you. So, uh, next up is, how do you overcome setbacks and challenges in your sports career, or just in life in general? And what advice can you give young uh, people here, or young athletes, facing similar obstacles? Just a human being, I think. I can jump into that one because right. I actually have a, a story. It was okay. my um, it was the first year, my first year in the WNBA. Um, I, like I said, I played well in college. I got drafted by the Mystics, and um, so when I was in college, I was like pretty much like um, a traditional post player. I was like I played close to the basket. I didn't shoot a lot of jump shots, and so when I got to the WNBA, I really struggled. I thought. I wasn't going to be playing after my rookie year. I was like, I don't think I can play. Everyone's so big, so strong. I'm not going to be able to compete. So I went overseas, and I worked on my game, but I, wasn't, I was never confident enough to translate what I was working on to the, like, the actual games. So when I went overseas, I had a coach, and he was like, you're working on your jump shots, blah, blah, blah. Just shoot it in a game. And so I, I started doing that, and my whole game changed. I became more of like a face-out player, like face-up player more. I like stepped away from the basket a lot more. And so when I came back to the WNBA the next year, I got most improved in the league. And it was a huge change for me. And it was just like, you always have to improve. You always have to get better. Um, and when you fail, you have to figure out how can I succeed? Um, you know, because you are going to fail a lot. So it's always like coming back and saying, how can I, you know, figure out how to change my game? If it's not basketball, how to change things so I could come back better and uh, do well. 
Okay, what about you? So you're telling me you were a two-time <laughs> world champion. You won in college, and you got most, most improved. improved. Like, I was an all-star two times, too. All-star all two times. Two, man. Chris Lalonga, everyone. Now here in Indonesia, talking to us. We could just spend the whole time just all of her accolades. <laughs> uh, as far as um, overcoming adversity, honestly, I think you have to almost embrace failure. And... I'm going to be, I hate failing. Like, much like Crystal, I'm a perfectionist. It drives me crazy. Um, but when I do fail, I understand that's bringing me closer to my goal because I understand that's something that I'm not going to do again. That is not helping me to my goal. And so I think much in life is about perception. How do you perceive this failure? Is it a negative or is it a positive? We all have the choice of how we're going to perceive anything that happens to us in life. And so choosing to look at a failure and put that into another box and say, look, I did that wrong. I'm just not going to do that again. I'm not going to make that same mistake. And that's going to bring me closer to what I want to achieve. Because if you all look at things that you've accomplished in your life and you look at the failures that preceded that, you're going to see a lot of failure. And so, look, making a mistake, it's going to happen. But not letting that deter you, that's what separates the greats from the good, from the average, from the okay. It's your ability to just keep fighting through those mistakes, keep fighting through that adversity, and appreciating it for what it is. It's just part of that process to get you where you need to go. Yeah, because sometimes when you make a mistake, you fill into a black hole, and you just think about that mistake all over again, and you just not choose not to move on, and that's the hard part. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you have to realize, you know what, I gotta move on, just keep moving forward, People make mistakes, but at the end of the day, just be grateful for that mistake because it's going to make you a better person at the end of the day. So I have one more question uh, before we uh, give the chance uh, for the people to ask questions to you. Uh, this one's for Crystal. So uh, I want to ask how to overcome bias, prejudice, and find a positive mindset, and also peace through community activism and sports based on your experience in the WNBA. How to overcome bias? Um, I would say that you need people. For, first off, you need allies, people who are not discriminated against. Um, those people need to do their part. I always say that. I tell people all the time, what are you doing? If you're not part of the marginalized community, how are you helping the marginalized community? Um, I would say to get over bias, I mean, sometimes it may be out of your control, um, but if it's in your control, it's a tough question. I feel like I need to think on it a little bit. Um, it's okay. You can, you can take your time. Yeah, That's okay. Do we have another question so I can think on it a little yeah, bit? Sure, sure. Yeah, sure, we'll sure. We'll go to Steven first. I feel okay. like I need to think on that a little it's bit. It's okay. Take your time. Take your time, Crystal. So, uh, Steven, I just want to ask, how do you give back to your community, to your community, and inspire other young individuals to pursue an active lifestyle and positive mindset through sports? Also, do you have any message to probably young athletes? Does anybody want to be an athlete later? Oh. So do you have any message to young athletes who aspire to follow in your footsteps and actually make it to professional sports? And what was the first question? Uh, what was the first question? Of oh, that uh, it's actually the how do you give back to your community? Okay. Um, well, like I said, even when I played in, in the NBA as a professional athlete, I would always um, volunteer in my community to speak or to uh, give of my time. I was fortunate... I'm a child of educators, mm -hmm. and so when you're a child of educators, you know, there's no more selfless people in the world than teachers because they educate educate the youth. And so even though I, I'm not a teacher, I find other ways to try to teach and to educate. And so I will go and speak at schools, at universities, yeah. um, volunteer my time that way, help kids that want to get into media, um, w whatever it may be. And I think it's very important to... Um, to give back to my community in order to be you know, a positive change in the future. I think at the end of the day, 
everybody wants to have a legacy. Everybody wants to leave an imprint. And you know, whenever I have that opportunity, um, I do that. Much like you know, Crystal, Crystal and I have done here in Indonesia, um, giving our time and our energy to uh, a, a great cause. And that's why I think I appreciate being a sports envoy um, because it's meaningful work, and you can see. Um, the effects that it has on kids and the excitement um, and the positive change that it can create. Yeah. And, and as far as the advice? Yes. Um, this is for both of you, actually. I, I, I think, you know, in this day and age when there's so much negativity, so much hate, uh, much like Crystal sa said, you have to find out a way to block that noise out. But at the end of the day, you have to focus on what it is that you want in your life. You, you can't um, when I talk about having your dream, you can't live your parents' dreams. You can't live your friend's dream. You have to live your dream because um, I think a lot of people out there in life are not happy because they aren't living their dream. They didn't pursue the path that they wanted to in life because, like I said earlier, they gave up what they wanted most for what they wanted now. And figure out what you want most in life. Figure out what that dream is and follow it. Follow it um, to the end. Because that's what's going to make you happy, not what's on social media, not what they're telling you is going to make happy. What makes you happy? Mm -hmm. So you first, you got to find out first what makes you happy. Yeah, and that's kind of the hard part. It is. It is. So it's a journey. Yeah, Crystal, we're going back to you. Um, are you want to go back with the other question? Yes, please. And then yeah, um, I would say with discrimination, with biases, bringing it to light, um, talking about it not letting things be swept under the rug. Um, I actually think social media is something that is powerful when it comes to that because everyone has a voice. And I think people can be collective and come together and highlight issues um, on discrimination or things like bias. Um, really, that would be a, a huge focus for people. Um, but yeah. And to wrap things up, do you have any other messages to uh, the kids here who wants to maybe follow your first steps to go to professional sports? Yeah, I would agree with what Steven said. I mean, there's, you really have to focus. I mean, people think playing sports is, you know, you see people playing games, you see people shooting all these threes now. And you don't really think about all of the work that people put into play. I mean, our days would be five to six hours, six hour days of playing basketball. Um, it's not as easy as people make it seem. So if you want to play sports, you have to have a tremendous focus, um, not just on with practice, but the way you live your life, the way you eat, the way you sleep, the way you train. Um, there's so many things that you need to focus on. Thank you very much for sharing, uh, Stephen and Crystal. Thank you very much. Rounds of applause to our speakers. Now we're giving the chance to you to ask questions to Stephen and Crystal. Saatnya bertanya. Yeah. Okay. So, so my name is Fadli, and this is my sign name, Fadli. And I want to ask So if someone is already trained in, for instance, in here in Jakarta and then they have to move to another country, so what is your tips on consistency to keep training? So they can keep training and they can still be a player for basketball because all of us as deaf people, we consistently moving to another cities. And for instance, we have to move to, to another islands and 
uh, like in here in Java, there are a lot of people that playing basketballs, but for the other islands, it's not really a lot of people that playing basketball. So how we keep consistently training to do basketballs? Maybe you can have uh, you can uh, give any tips for it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So the question is that. Thank you, Fadli. So for uh, for instance, Fadli who moves a lot. Uh, to other cities, how to keep keep consistent so he can train everywhere? Yeah, I, I would say when it comes to basketball, basketball is very unique because you don't need anyone else to work on your game. I think if you can find a court, even if it's outside, um, you can work on your ball handling, you can work on your shooting, um, you can work on a lot of things by yourself. I mean, even if you don't have a basketball court, as long as you have a ball, I mean, you could work on your handle, um, just little things to, to make yourself better, and then you can always work on your conditioning, making sure you're always in shape, um, because basketball is a, very, is a high intensity sport. Um, I would say those are some things that you can do to continue to work on your game. All right, thank you, Crystal. Do you have any tips? For us? Yeah, and I, I would say, much like Crystal said, training for, for sports and basketball in particular is a ve very lonely endeavor. Um, <laughs> if I could tell you the amount of um, time spent in a gym alone, um, in a hot gym with no air condition, or on a track with the heat coming down, you know, working on sprints, it's very lonely. And I think that's what separates the people that want to be good from the people that want to be great, is pushing through that. So mm -hmm. I would say using that adversity to your benefit, because I always thought when I was in a gym by myself and it's hot or I'm running on the track and I got up at six in the morning, I knew that there weren't other people doing that mm -hmm. because they were either out late at night at the club or they just didn't have um, the fortitude to do that. Yeah. And so when you're on a, an island and, and you, you're keeping to move, you know, that gives you an opportunity to maybe learn a different technique yeah. or to see a different style of play in a, in a different place and to make that part of your own and other people that might just be in Jakarta, if they have to travel, they're not going to be as good because it's going to mess with them. But, but you're good at that because mm -hmm. you've done it for so much. That's part of your thing now. Like things aren't going to affect you as much because you're used to being on the move. So yeah. you take that, what some might perceive as a negative and you turn that into a positive and you make that part of your game and that becomes part of your strength because, you know, Throughout a game, you're going to have adversity, but you're used to that, and you're going to be able to fight through it where someone else might not be able to do that. Yeah, so you have to be willing to put on the hard work. Yeah, got to have the determination, and creativity is a big factor as well here. Yes, it is. Yeah, so thank you very much for the question. Terima kasih. Pertanyaannya. Do we have any more questions? Sini dulu. Okay, siap. Um, hello, my name is Diana from uh, 70 High School. Um, I want to ask, uh, I know you guys uh, as a prof professional players uh, has so many schedules. Um, you are so busy, I know it. But how did you uh, manage your schedule? Thank you. How Just do we manage our skills? Schedule. Uh, schedule. Okay. Schedules. I know uh, as a professional athletes, uh, you have so many schedules. But how do you actually... Uh, do the manage your schedules to do workouts to do this and that so it's about managing your schedules yeah i'll even go back to college when i had a lot on my plate with school and basketball and just trying to have a social life as well um it was more so about my focus um thinking about if i want to be a professional player do i want to do well in school it's like Okay, I have classes and then practice and then I'm going to focus and do my, my homework, all those things to make sure that I had the time. So it's more so about your focus, um, what you believe is important and taking care of that um, and, and letting the other things go to the side. And then if you have free time, like, okay, you can go to dinner. Okay, you can hang out with friends. Think, I mean, of course you go to dinner. You have to eat every night. But <laughs> I mean, like hanging out with friends, things like that. Um, it's really about making time for what's important, and then building everything else around it. 
Okay, raise your hand if you want to know the tip on how you can have it all. <laughs> have it all in life and achieve everything. You, you want to know? You can't. <laughs> I mean, much like Crystal says, you, you can't have it all. You have to make sacrifices. And she alluded to that a lot earlier. You have to figure it out, like what you want to do in life. And, you know, much like Crystal, when I was in college, um, we were both academic All-Americans, meaning we were the best on the court as well as off the court. And there were times when my friends would go out. Um, I knew I couldn't because I had to study for a test. Same thing when I was a professional athlete. Like I had to wake up early to get on the track. I had to get my shots up. And I couldn't do the things that my other friends that weren't professional athletes were doing. And so you have to sacrifice in life and figure out, again, when you're on social media, is that going to help me be a professional athlete? No, I need to be at the gym. Is that going to help me be a better uh, TV analyst? No, I need to be studying some game film. I need to talk to coaches. Is that going to help me be a speaker? No. So you have to sacrifice in life. You can't have everything. You can have what you want, but you have to figure out what you want and not just let all this external stimulus distract you from what it is that you want to be in life and who you want to be in life. So you got to set your priorities straight, yeah. and then you got to make the sacrifices. Yeah, I know uh, there's this thing called fear of missing out. You got to set that aside. Yeah, to actually achieve your goals in life. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, we still have time for a couple more. One more question. Okay, hi. So, my name is Joshua. I'm a founder of Indonesian basket, Deaf Basketball. And here's my team that's wearing white shirts. And I want to ask, mm -mm. Uh, what do you think, what is the factors that need to be concerned for making for communicate for deaf people that joining a deaf uh, deaf basketball group in Indonesia what is the important thing to communicate I I actually have an answer for that um I had a teammate Emma Messiman she's partially deaf and Tamika Catchings another WNBA player is as well I think it's and you can look up those two players they've overcome so much adversity. Um, I think people need to be inclusive to make sure they feel welcome um, because they, they were both all-stars um, and they, were all, they both were also WNBA champions. So I think those players can show you um, and show Indonesia what, can, what is possible if you believe in people because I'm sure some people have told them throughout their life, their life like, you can't play basketball, you're deaf. You know, and I'm sure people have said that, but they didn't believe that, and they always fought. And their Tamika Catchings is one of the greatest competitors to ever play in the WNBA. And um, you know, now she does. She's a TV analyst. She does so many things that people try to put limits on people, and she doesn't care. So I would say, um, you know, believe, and you can do. You can do it. Boleh di repeat questionnya? Ulang lagi tanya apa? Iya, nggak apa-apa. So the question is, yeah. What do you think? What is the most important factors that can improving the communications between for between the the groups that having deaf players? So it can help or improving deaf basketball players in Indonesia. Well, thank you, Joshua, for your question. And I think you creating that uh, basketball team goes a long way in having more people like yourself to um, be creative and finding avenues for pe people like yourself to participate in sports. And, and like we've said, um, that's one of the great things about sports is the inclusive nature of it and the fact that everybody can play. And I think the fact that 
you've created that league, and you are um, making other people aware of, you know, disabilities that they might not have known that existed. You know, and I think life is a lot about exposure and exposing people to different viewpoints, different ways of, of thinking, um, and that's the diversity that I think makes um, this world great is together, you know, we can create things, we can participate in things, um, but you creating that organization and allowing it to play with um, people that aren't deaf so that they can understand, wow, you know, they're just like I am. They can shoot the basketball. They're going to miss the basketball. They want to have fun playing basketball. Um, but I think when people are exposed to different ways of thinking, different ways of life, uh, different people with different skill sets and different disabilities, um, they, be, they become more empathetic. And empathy and compassion and self-awareness um, and emotional intelligence is really what's going to make this world uh, a better place to live in. So I thank you for what you've created and the things that, and the strides that you've made. Thank you very much, uh, Crystal, Stephen, for uh, answering those questions. And I think that wraps it up. So once again, rounds of applause for our speakers today. Thank you very much. <laughs> Crystal Longhorn and also Stephen. And I think that's a wrap. I'm going to give it back to you, Patricia. Okay, thank you, Karalfi, as our moderator for today. And also thank you, Stephen and Crystal. Once again, can we give a big round of applause to our moderator and speakers? Okay, after that, stay tuned because we have a meet and greet session. But if you want to come to our next amazing events here in Ad America, you can follow our social media. We have on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, AT America. With that, my name is Patricia Elizabeth, and see you at the next Ad America events. Bye!